if you care about making your quadcopter fly good or good or better, if you care about making your quadcopter fly better, then you should care about RPM filtering. RPM filtering is probably the most exciting feature in Betaflight 4.1 for making a wide variety of quads fly better. You see, Betaflight's default filters are tailored mostly toward like five inch mini quads. And that means that they're not optimal for, especially like micro quads, three inches and below all the way down to little 65 millimeter tiny whoops. But RPM filtering lets the flight controller target the filters exactly at the frequency that the motor RPM is actually making. And that's really good. But here's the problem. Micro quadcopters usually come with BLHeli S ESCs and BLHeli S doesn't support RPM filtering out of the box. Today, we're going to look at two aftermarket firmwares that you can put on your micro quad on your BLHeli S ESCs to let you do RPM filtering. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. The two firmwares we're going to look at in this video are JESC and Jazz Maverick. And both of these are aftermarket firmware for your BLHeli S ESC that let you do bi-directional D-shot and RPM filtering. They also add another feature called 48 kilohertz motor PWM frequency. And this is almost as exciting. Some people have said that it using 48K motor PWM extends flight time for little 1S whoops by like 30 or 40%. I haven't tested that. But suffice it to say, these firmwares are pretty exciting. Why doesn't BLHeli have this stuff by default? The answer is that the BLHeli devs have moved on to BLHeli 32. BLHeli S is free and open source, and they don't make any money for it. And after years of supporting BLHeli S for free, all the way to the point of literally turning down huge donations because they just didn't want it, they finally went, okay, I guess we'll start charging manufacturers because the manufacturers were making money selling BLHeli SESCs. The BLHeli devs were finally like, I think we should get a cut of that. And they released BLHeli 32. But what about all these quadcopters with BLHeli SESCs? Since BLHeli S is open source, anybody can go back, and some people did, to add this functionality in. But let's start by looking at JESC. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to this web page where you can download the JESC configurator. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. I've actually installed JESC previously, but I'm probably out of date. So let's get the latest version. This zip file is going to come down. I'm going to just click on that to open it up. And we've got this folder, JESC configurator. And here on my hard drive, I've got an RC Utilities folder where I put a whole bunch of little utilities like this. I'm just going to drag that folder into my RC Utilities folder on my hard drive. Take it. You can't run it directly from within the zip file in case that wasn't clear. And then I'm going to go in there and I'm going to launch the JESC configurator. Now at this point, I can plug in my quadcopter to USB and I can plug a battery in. You need a battery to power up the ESC. And I can select my COM port here and connect and read setup. And here are my ESCs. Now, as you saw there, JESC is free to install. But if you want to use RPM filtering, you need a feature called bidirectional D-Shot. And that is a paid plugin. If you don't want to pay, you can use the Jazz Maverick firmware, which I'm going to show you how to install a little bit later in the video. But I do want to make an argument. The developer of JESC is also the main developer. In as much as there's ever like one developer in a big open source project, he is the main guy, so I'm told by the other devs, who brought us bidirectional D-Shot in Betaflight. And he gave that code to the Betaflight project, which is open source and free, put tons and tons of work into developing that and just gave it to us all and we benefit from it. So when he comes along and says, hey, I'm going to do this for BLHeli S, and he says, but I kind of want to make a couple bucks. I don't really begrudge it. In fact, I kind of feel good about it's the least I can do in some sense. Now, if you don't feel that way, I'm not going to try and change your mind, but I do want to at least make the case that this isn't just like some greedy bastard who's never given anything back to the project. This guy has given so much to the project, and if you want to give a little bit back, using JESC is one way you can do that. In order to unlock that functionality, we're going to go to this website, jflight.net, and we're going to purchase 
a 4ESC license to unlock the bidirectional D-shot functionality in JESC. But before you plunk down your money, go to the install instructions and check whether your ESC supports JESC. Here in the JESC configurator or in the BLHeli configurator, however, when you read setup, you're going to see the firmware type that is currently on your ESC. Now, this one says JESC05 because I'm recording this after the fact and I already flashed JESC onto it. But you'll see something like O-H-05, A-H-015. Now, what's, what you need to see is that that middle letter is an H. If that middle letter in your ESC type is an L instead of an H, then you cannot run this. You just stop. Do not proceed. So let's go ahead down and let's add to cart. It's going to be $5.94 for a 4 ESC license. Now that you've purchased the licenses, here are the steps to get bidirectional d shot working with JESC. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit license all and license the ESCs. We're going to need to do that just by logging in. We can see up here that my account has eight licensed ESCs and 20 available licenses, and this is going to use four licenses. Once those licenses are used, I don't think there's any way to get them back. So we're going to go ahead and license these ESCs. They are now licensed. The next thing to do is to flash the ESCs. We're going to pick our JESC version, and I'm just going to stick to the 24K PWM version. These 48K PWM versions are still experimental. So we're just going to hit JESC 2.2, 24K PWM, and flash. At this point, you are not done yet. Bidirectional DSHET will not work yet. The next thing you need to do is flash all telemetry. Pick the telemetry version, the only one available, and flash. A lot of people overlook this second step, and then they wonder, I paid my money, why is my bidirectional DSHET not working? and get really freaking annoyed. Don't overlook this step. And now what you should see is that all four of your ESCs show as activated, licensed, and with telemetry. And that means you're ready to proceed. If on the other hand, you don't wanna pay any money to get this functionality, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Jazz Maverick firmware. And in order to install the Jazz Maverick firmware, you're gonna to wanna to download either BLHeli Suite. Uh, BLHeli Suite is, got a pretty clunky interface and it only runs on Windows. So I would actually recommend you skip BLHeli Suite and use this app, which is BLHeli Configurator. Now BLHeli Configurator used to be a Chrome app. And in fact, it is still <laughs> installed on Chrome on my machine, but the Chrome app is actually, I'm, I think they've stopped updating it because Google has kind of dropped support for Chrome apps. So what you're gonna wanna do is download it from GitHub and then on Windows at least, I'm just going to make a folder and drop the contents of the zip file into the folder. So there's no installer or anything like that. And then I'm going to run blhelliconfigurator.exe. And frankly, a lot of people feel that this is easier to use and nicer than blheli suite. Now, after you read setup in blheli configurator, you're going to want to make a note of this value. OH5 is the firmware type for my ESC. Make a note of that because if you install the wrong firmware on the ESC, it can damage it. And unlike JESC, we're going to have to download this firmware manually, at least for the time being. Then in the Jazz Maverick BLHeli repo, the video you're going to go into the BLHeli S Scilabs folder and you're going to go into hex files. And there are various different versions of the hex files here 16.7, 7.1, 7.3, etc. At the time I'm making this video, the RC Groups thread says that 1673 is the one that is most likely to work for most number of people. People who are testing these newer ones, some ESCs are working, some ESCs aren't. So we're going to hit 1673 and we're going to find OH05. OH O. OH5. Here we go. OH5 rev 1673.hex. And we are going to right click. Do we do right click download? No. We go here and then this is really confusing how GitHub does this. We right click save link as on the raw button and we save that to the desktop. 
Now let's see if I can so flash all, select file manually, is it in downloads and is it in desktop? There it is. So I'm going to flash all with these. Yeah, thanks. Now whether you flash JESC or Jazz Maverick, at this point you should power cycle and let's just see, let's just confirm that this is even working. And to do that, we're going to go first to the configuration tab and I'm going to be on DSHOT 300. DSHOT 600 is a little more prone to corrupted packets. We're just going to start at DSHOT 300. Let's set our PID loop to 4K and 4K. These are just some good, safe starting parameters. And we're going to enable bidirectional DSHOT. After you've enabled bidirectional DSHOT, the next thing to do is to go to the motors tab. And what you need to see is an error percent here of let you want to see less than 1%. And in fact, what you really want to do is enable this check mark, make sure your props are off, and you're going to raise the slider. You don't have to go all the way to 100%. In fact, on some motors, it's actually not, it might not be great for the ESC to go to 100% with the prop off. But you just want to see that it needs to be let. Whoa! What am I? Ah! Good thing my props were off. <laughs> That's why you turn the props off, kids. <laughs> yeah. That was exciting. I know. <clears throat> you want to see that that stays at 0% or at the very least less than 1%. Um, if it's not staying below 1%, one thing you can do is you can go to the configuration tab and you can lower your D-shot. If you're running D-shot 600, you may want to take it down to 300. If you're running 300, you, you might take it to 150, but you really shouldn't have to do that. And in fact, that's one of the things some people are seeing on some ESCs with the Jazz Maverick firmware that they're not seeing with JESC. Mm, so, but Jazz Maverick costs you nothing to try, see? You may as well give it a go. Now that you have got bidirectional DSHOT working on your ESCs, the next thing to do is to set up RPM filtering and tune your filters to get the best possible flight performance out of your quadcopter. And that is a topic for another video. In fact, I've already made that video focusing on 5-inch quads and BL Heli 32. But the gist of it is no different, and I'm going to let you go watch that video next. There's a link down in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thanks also to Joe Lucid, it's the J in JESC. And Joe Lucid gave us not only JESC, which makes it possible for BL Heli S ESCs to take advantage of bidirectional D-shot. Joe Lucid basically gave us, without, I'm sure other people worked on it too, but from what I hear, Joe Lucid basically gave us bidirectional D-shot and RPM filtering, period. So thank you to Joe for that. And thanks also to Jazz Maverick for putting in all the work for free so that people who didn't want to pay five bucks for it could, could also get it on their BL Heli S ESCs. Let me know down in the comments how RPM filtering is working out for you. Did it make a big difference? Did it, did you not really notice a difference? Did it, God forbid, make things worse? I always like to keep my ear to the ground and see how these things are being received just in the world at large as opposed to just sort of in my, like, lab. Hmm. That's going to do it for this video, though. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, if your quad is flying better, I'd like to remind you I have a Patreon. You can support me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I earned it. Uh, there's a link to that down in the video description. Of course, like any YouTuber, I'd also love to have your subscription. Hit the notification bell. Hit the like and all that nonsense. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying, everybody.